Magnetic force acting on a sliding bar. The conducting bar illustrated in the figure moves on two frictionless parallel rails in the presence of a uniform magnetic field directed into the page. So it's the same scenario we've considered in the second experiment. The bar has mass m and its length is l. The bar is given an initial velocity v initial to the right and is released at t is equal to zero. Find the distance traveled. Okay, so what will be the uh, final distance traveled by this bar? Using Newton's laws, find the velocity of the bar as a function of time and show that the same result is found by using an energy approach. Okay, now following uh, Faraday's law here, remember that the flux through this uh, loop, conducting loop, which is created by this bar and the rails, will be equal to BLX b times the area, uh, the area vector and the magnetic field are in the same direction. The induced EMF is uh, d phi b dt, that's the magnitude of the induced DMF, EMF, which is b l dx dt, which is b l v. V is the velocity of the conducting bar. The induced current I is BLV divided by R. And the force, the magnetic force, the bar feels, if this is our x-axis, is IL cross B, so uh, L will be pointing in this direction. So L cross B, the four fingers curl into the page, the thumb points to the left. So it is basically with this uh, coordinate system here in, uh, in minus I hat direction. So it is minus I L B I hat. L cross B gives us L V because the angle is 90 degrees between the current and the magnetic field. And this is the net force acting on this bar. So this is equal to a mass times acceleration. That's Newton's second law. Okay. And uh, the current induced is minus BLV divided by R. Then we have LBI hat. So this is basically replacing the current here, BLV over R. That's equal to m dv dt. The acceleration is dv dt. So if I integrate this from time t equals 0 to time t, integral from 0 to t minus, so let's see what we have here in parentheses, b l square divided by m r dt i hat this is equal to the integral from the initial velocity to final velocity dv prime divided by v prime okay so uh, basically the left hand side so I have collected mass on the left hand side and taken V to the right hand side. So this is isolation of variables. Time on the left, velocity on the right. From T equals zero, where velocity is V initial to time T, where velocity is V. I have integrated this equation and there is no time dependence on any of the quantities here. So this is basically minus B L square divided by mr times t. And the right-hand side of the integral gives me natural logarithm v divided by v initial. Okay, so I have taken the magnitudes here. So the delta v vector is in i hat direction also. So I got rid of the i hat. So basically these are uh, in magnitude. So I obtain the speed as a function of time t as the initial speed e to the minus 
b square uh, this was there were two b's here so this was b square so it is minus b square l square t divided by m times r in other words i can write this uh, velocity as a function of time v as a function of time is v initial e to the minus t over tau in i hat direction and tau is m r divided by b square l square so that's the velocity as a function of time okay now i want to know in part b uh, the same result can be found using an energy approach so if i look at the power dissipated by the resistor pr it is i square r it is b l v over r parentheses squared b squared l squared v squared divided by r squared multiplied with r this gives me for the power dissipated by the resistor b square l square v square divided by r because one of the r's cancel here and this is basically uh, the rate at which we are uh, transferring energy into the system so uh, because of the application of this force, this uh, bar is going to be slowing down. It, it's uh, the net force is to the left, and therefore it will be losing its kinetic energy. So this must be equal to the uh, change in minus the change in kinetic energy, one half m v square. So kinetic energy decreases. energy is lost to heat in the resistor okay so uh, we have a b square l square v square divided by r the power dissipated by the resistor equals minus 1 over 2m 2v dv dt the twos will uh, cancel and i will obtain uh, also one of the v's will disappear here basically the same equation i have obtained uh, in the previous discussion so this equation minus b l v b l b square l square uh, v over r is m dv dt so that's m dv dt b square l square v over r so the same equation so the solution will be the same v of t will be equal to v initial e to the minus t over tau the same result okay <clears throat> so since the kinetic energy is decreasing minus the change in kinetic energy is the power uh, dissipated uh, per unit time is the power dissipated by the resistor okay so v of t is dx dt so we were also supposed to find the uh, final position here integrating from zero to x final dx we should have integrating from 0 to time t is equal to infinity v initial e to the minus t over tau so this gives us for x final minus v initial tau e to the minus t over tau evaluated between time t equals 0 and infinity so final position we will find v initial times tau where tau is equal to mr divided by b square 
L square. So this will be the final position or the total distance traveled by the bar before it comes to a rest. Okay, so uh, we have talked about an example, a magnetic force acting on a sliding bar. This sliding bar is connected to frictionless uh, parallel rails and the bar has mass m. And here we don't have any external force. So it's, it has an initial velocity v initial, but it will slow down because it's under the influence of this force I L cross B, which is pointing to the left. And this force is in minus I hat direction. That's the only force acting on the uh, bar on the x axis. Therefore, it's equal to mass times acceleration on the x axis. And uh, that's Newton's second law. If I write for the current BLV over R, because the induced EMF is BLV, motional EMF, I obtain an equation between uh, B uh, in between V and T, B square L square uh, V over R is M dV dT. So taking M to the left hand side, V to the right hand side, we obtain dV over V is b square l square over m r dt. If we integrate this from time t equals 0 to t, uh, we see that we have minus b square l square over m r t is natural logarithm v over v initial. v initial is the value of the velocity at t equals 0 and v its uh, value at t equals uh, at time t. So this is v of t, v initial e to the minus b square l square t over m r. In other words, we can say it's a time constant tau mr over b square l square v initial e to the minus t over tau. So it exponentially decays in time, finally reaching a stop. Okay, so for the second approach using the energy, uh, energy approach here, uh, we can obtain the same result. The power dissipated by the resistor is I square R, which is BLV over R parentheses square R. This should be equal to minus the change, uh, the rate of change of kinetic energy, because as the bar comes to a stop, its kinetic energy is decreasing. Energy is lost to heat in the resistor. So this gives me exactly the same relationship between velocity and time. So V of T is VI e to the minus T over tau. I was also supposed to find the final distance traveled by this bar, starting from X equals zero, what is X final? It Because V is dx dt, if you integrate this from zero to infinity, V initial e to the minus T over tau, dt, we obtain v initial times tau as the uh, final distance traveled. So tau is mr over b square l square.